Well, hey there, boys and girls. Uh, just a real quick video to help you with the great Nike experiment and also with uh, any time you're using graphs. The first part of the video will be on how to use graph to interpolate or extrapolate data. So that'll be finding data that is uh, within your data set and data that is maybe outside your data set. So get excited for that. And then the second part of the video will be on uh, calculating the percent error. If you have some predicted values that you've used a graph to interpolate or, or extrapolate to find, and then you have some actual data to compare it to, we can actually see how close that data is, statistically speaking, which is how we like to roll in science. So let's go ahead and get on into it. Let's say, for example, that you have a graph sort of like this one right here. And for the most part, this is how your uh, height versus shoe size graph should look, except for right up in this area at the top, there's going to be a nice, beautiful, majestic title. And also, you'll notice that this graph is not the same at all units as yours. These are inches over here, which is devilment. You'll be using meters. And then on shoe size, they've got like US standard shoe sizes, which again, not what your graph should have. Your graph should have millimeters. Again, these numbers are not the same as your numbers. You're going to find these by finding three separate people. This is just showing you how to do those calculations. So don't worry if your data comes out differently from mine, as long as you did the math correctly, you should be good to go. But let's go ahead and jump into it anyway. So let's say you have some hypothetical person that is 1.73 meters in height. Now, to figure out what that is on the graph, you should know that 1.73 meters is about like 68-ish inches. So on our graph here, 68 would probably be right about here. We're just going to draw a line straight over from our height and we try to keep it as straight as possible. So you'll see this one. Yeah, it's pretty straight. And you just come over till you hit your line. If you don't have a trend line on your graph, then uh, you can't use this technique. If you've connected all the dots, you just come to the first stop. You'll notice with this much data, we need to be using a trend line. So we come across from our height of 68, come across to our height. And then we're just going to drop it as straight as we can, straight down. Now for this, I recommend using a ruler. If you freehand it, it's, it's going to wee wobble. You could also use a folder or some other straight edge. Anyway, here you can see that that correlates to a shoe size of about nine. And I have no idea what that is in centimeters, but luckily the internet's a thing. So that would actually give us a predicted shoe size of 260 millimeter and that is how you interpolate notice i was within the data now what if we had something that was outside of the data what would we do then oh no so the first thing we'll need to do is just sort of move everything over a pinch give us a little more room to work all right so let's say we're working with someone who is much shorter uh, like 1.6 meters. Now 1.6 meters is a mere 63 inches. You'll notice if we look over here, our trend line stopping just below 65. 63 would be probably about uh, right in right in this area here. So we'll just put a little mark on there. There would be about 63. Now that's not the greatest. That's not the greatest. In fact, that's that's going to be a pretty rough time. So what we will do is we have to extrapolate the data because we don't actually have data for a person that's short that matches our trend line. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, wait, we can just go over here. This person is about that height and sort of, yeah, we're shooting, but uh, go with me here. So what you'll do is you actually extend your trend line out. Now, you can actually do this by drawing it until we hit about this X, or you can just sort of eyeball it. Either way works. So we're hitting about here, and then we'll draw our line down to here. Now, you'll notice we are out of X axis here, but luckily, we can sort of extend that out and then just roughly use the spacing. So there would be, you know, five and a half, five, four and a half, four, three and a half, three, two and a half. So about a shoe size of about a, a two. It's more or less where this person would be if they were so short, according to our data. Now already you can see that is that is just like crazy short. So uh, keep in mind that when you're using a graph as a tool, your data can be sort of limiting here. And so just because someone is uh, having these made up datas doesn't mean that they're actually going to be having a, a shoe size that that small. Uh, when you're extrapolating, uh, 
that's tends to be not as good. Interpolating tends to work a lot better because you've got something that's matching your trend line already, but let's get back into it. So we said that this person over here would have a shoe size of about a two is actually for infants. And that would be like three and three quarters inch or like 95 millimeters. So you can see here, if we're, we're looking at this, so doing claim evidence reasoning, we could definitely rationalize that this is not such a good. But here we've used our tool now twice to make some predicted lengths. The first one with 1.73 meters, I think I said 1.62 earlier, but that would be more of an extrapolating because that'd be down here. But 1.73 meters, that extrapolates about here, gives us 260 millimeters. And if we were to extrapolate with one 1.6 meters that would give us something in this area over here which would be about 95 millimeters so now uh, we have to do some math now in order to do this math we need to know the actual shoe size of these people so first we need to measure their actual shoe size so this person would as an actual shoe size let's say of 273 millimeters and this person, despite being very short, does not have a 95 millimeter shoe size. Instead, uh, this person actually has a 244 millimeter shoe size. So still pretty small, size seven, so not very big. So in order to find the percent error, you're going to use this equation right there with your data table on your sheet. But basically, you're, you're going to calculate the percent error by taking your actual value, what you actually measured for the person, and you're going to subtract the predicted value, then you're going to divide that by the actual value. Once you move the decimal point over two times, that's multiplying by 100, you will get the percent error. So why don't we go ahead and see if we can work through that. So for person number one, for their actual shoe size, we got 273. We're gonna take that and we're going to subtract the predicted value of 260. That gives us, with, our, with the use of our handy dandy uncalculatrice, an amount of 13. So now we will be taking that 13 that we just calculated and divide it by our actual value. So we take 13, and we're going to have to divide that by the actual value, which again was 273. As you can see, we're going to get a very, very small number, but that's okay. We do that math on our calculator here and we get 0 0.0476. And now all we have to do to turn this into our percent error is to multiply it by 100. So we just take this decimal point, move it over once, move it over twice. So we have a percent error of 4.76%. Pretty small percent error. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see how close we were with our data that we know is really far off. So we'll do that same thing again. We start by taking our actual value, which up here on the table is 244. We're going to subtract the predicted value of 95. So we take 244 minus 95. That gives us 149. Pretty, pretty big gross difference, but you know, we'll go with it. Then we're going to take that difference of 149. We're going to divide it by our actual value of 244. And again, you'll notice that we should be getting a value smaller than 1. 149. 244. And that gives us 6.6106 6, or 611. So all we have to do again is we just take our... 0.611, we move the decimal once, twice, and you'll notice that that gives us a percent error now of 61.1%. That is a massive error, which makes sense because we had to interpret that line forever, and 95 millimeters would again be an infant's shoe size. That, boys and girls, is how you find the percent error or percent difference and how you can use a graph to interpolate data or extrapolate data. Thanks for watching.